Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Russia once again for the first time in what feels like a good little while. So we're going to have a look at a beer from another brewery that has never featured on the channel before, but as I've told you in previous Russian reviews, there are some great Russian beers and breweries out there these days. So if you get the chance to try some stuff from over there, I highly recommend that you do. We're seeing more of these breweries exporting their beers here into the EU and as far as I'm concerned, long may that continue. And it's always cool to feature these breweries here on the channel as well. But uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to a little place called Gagarin, which is to the west of Moscow in the Smolensk region. And we're having a look at my first beer from XP Brew. So this particular beer is called Hyperplane. It comes in at 7% ABV, and they're describing this one as an American IPA, which more often than not tends to mean it's more of a West Coast type IPA. But sometimes it can mean it's a little bit more of a hybrid but uh, yeah very very curious to see how this one turns out half liter can as you can see this was yet another of the beers that I purchased from uh, Beer Dome down in the Netherlands who've always got a great selection of Russian stuff so if you want to get some good Russian beers then Beer Dome in the Netherlands is the place to do that within the EU but uh, yeah very curious to see how this one turns out fingers crossed it's another good beer and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well always nice to have some Russian beers for you here on the channel. I do hope that I can get to visit Russia at some point. Once my Swedish passport comes through, I get uh, 16 days, I think it is, visa-free there. So maybe a wee trip to St. Petersburg and Moscow could be a first, uh, in, an interesting first trip into Russia, of course. But uh, yeah, something for the future. Looking forward to this one. Let's crack on then. As always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done, or I will do in the future, I should say, from XP Brew. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for the Russian beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. Especially if you're watching over in Russia it would be great to know what breweries to keep an eye out from over there but wherever you're from it's always great to hear from you and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway on to my brewery notes then to tell you a little bit about xp brew so xp brew as i've mentioned to you already are based in gagarin which is to the west of moscow in the smolensk region it's actually closer to Moscow than it is to Smolensk city itself, about 170 kilometers west. But uh, this town you might recognize the name of. So Gagarin, the first man in space. But uh, the town was originally called Gzhatsk if I'm pronouncing that correctly, after the nearby Gjat River. But since 1968, it's been named after cosmonaut Colonel Yuri Gagarin, who was the first man to fly in space aboard Vostok 1 in uh, 1961. The first woman... Valentina Tereshkova, if I remember her name correctly, she flew in 1963. But uh, uh, Yuri Gagarin was born in the nearby village of Klushino, actually. So yeah, that would be a place that I want to go and visit on my first trip to Russia as well. So fingers crossed we can make that happen at some time. I studied astrophysics, of course, so I'm interested in all this, you know, astronomical history and stuff. So yeah, it was really cool to find a beer that was from the town named after Yuri Gagarin, of course. So uh, yeah, but this brewery itself was founded by Denis Koryagin, and Dennis was originally a home brewer who released his beers under the name Pie, but uh, apparently he brewed his first IPA back in 2012 and he spent some time over in California in America to perfect his brewing. A few years later in 2016, he gained his international beer judge certificate and it was this year that he officially founded XP Brew. So the brewery itself was built in a completely new structure which was located on some of Dennis's own land. It's right next to the railway apparently and the brewery has an American brew kit from 
from Premier Stainless Systems. It produces 1.8 tonnes of beer per time, or if you translate that into litres, it's 5,100 litres. The unusual measurement is because it's an American system and, you know, they use all these gallons and fluid ounces and all of these kind of things. But um, apparently they had to get custom made tanks and barrels and things like that to go with this brew kit. But their uh, fermentation tanks, from what I understand, are custom order, but Russian made. So, uh, yeah, they started off bottling the beers using an Italian bottling machine and in 2018 they changed to cans. From what I understand, there is a tap room on site now. Uh, at the brewery so you can go and check that out but if you see pictures of this facility it is actually very very impressive and this is one of the the few purpose-built breweries that I think I've come across in Russia so far quite often you'll find them in kind of repurposed buildings but yeah I think this is the first craft brewery in Russia that I've come across so far who have built a new brewery from scratch actually but uh, yeah over the last few years they've continued to expand their fermentation capacity and you know grow their exports and things like this and as of June 20 2021 when I'm filming this review for you these guys have produced 175 different kinds of beer according to Untapped. But um, yeah that's all I can really tell you about XP Brew for the moment. I can't tell you why the brewery is called XP Brew. There was nothing listed about that in the um, in any of the articles that I read but um, yeah it seems that uh, they take the space theme quite uh, quite seriously which you can understand when uh, they're from where they are but yeah I like quite a lot of their beers have this kind of astronomical graphic sort of thing on the back and quite a few of them have this constellation style of artwork as well which I think is great but um, yeah as I say that's all I can really tell you about them uh, for the moment if you want to learn more about this brewery you can check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on they do have a VK page which is the Russian equivalent of Facebook I guess we could say and uh, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages as well to learn more about all the different beers that these guys have done so so um, yeah, that is it for your history section in this video. Let's have a look at the beer itself. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. As you can see, it's a little bit different from uh, what we've seen before. I have to say, I really like this one. I think I'm going to keep this can for my um, display behind me that I'll have in my new apartment later. But uh, yeah, there you can see XP Brew. You can see Sputnik inside that, which I think is very, very cool. And yeah, you've got the lion constellation with this one, Hyperplane. But uh, yeah, a half litre can, this one, a 7% West Coast American IPA. Uh, but it looks great. So yeah, this one I think I paid about six euros fifty or seven euros for. As I've told you in previous reviews, Russian beers will be a little bit more expensive because Russia doesn't have a trade deal with the EU. So you know the importers have got to pay tariffs and things on these beers. But uh, yeah, that's just how it goes. I like the Russian beers. I don't mind paying a little bit extra to get a hold of these. I do the same with the Brazilian beers, of course, as well. And you know that's why I tend to order from Beer Dome. Always good Brazilian beers and always good Russian things too. But um, yeah, tell us a little bit about the beer on the back here. But none of that was actually listed on the Untapped, of course. So I can't really translate any of that. My Russian is nowhere near good enough to um, to have a go at that. I did a basic Russian course at university, which I very much enjoyed. And uh, now that I've finished Swedish, maybe that is something that I can uh, get back to. But uh, yeah, as I said, 7% American IPA. This one, usually when they call it an American IPA, that means that it's either going to be a New England West Coast hybrid or it will be a bit more of a West Coaster. But um, yeah, looks the part, this one, in terms of its artwork. Let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and then very, very curious to see what this beer has in store for us. So yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. There we go. I think, yeah, we've got about two thirds, three quarters of it in the glass now, and that'll do for taking a look and doing the aroma and things. So, yes, as you can see then, this beer has poured a lovely kind of rich yellow color, actually. You can see there's a solid finger of a frothy. I would say, hmm, I'd say creamy colored head on this one. I don't think that is perfect white. But it looks very, very nice regardless. So yeah, solid finger ahead on this one. That will probably fade away a little bit as we go through the beer. But you can see a lovely kind of rich yellow colour. If I shine this one up to the light, yeah, it's a lovely, very bright yellow colour. And I think perhaps 
I think I've told you lads, I think it is a perfect white head on this one when I shine it up to the light. It must just be this new light bulb that I've got behind me, making it look a little bit more kind of creamy than it is. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there, and you can see that the beer itself has a rather nice kind of natural haze to it actually. So yeah, it does look a little bit more like a kind of West Coast uh, IPA this one. So uh, yeah, but with the level of haze it has, it might well have a little bit of oat and wheat in it as well. But uh, yeah, nothing particularly surprising about the beer in terms of its appearance when you consider what style it is. Remember, the colour of your beer is determined by one, the type of malts that you use. Those determine the magnitude of the colour. Two, the length of your wort boil. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. And then also any adjuncts and barrel aging will play a role. In, uh, in determining that as well but those other two factors there are not at play in this one this one's all about the type of malts that you're using and the length of the wort boil an IPA like this is probably going to undergo a wort boil of between 60 and, uh, and 90 minutes but um, yeah it uh, certainly looks very very nice this beer as I say a little bit of a natural haze to it the haze in your beers of course depends on you know the yeast that you use and any wheat and oat that you uh, that you use as well and this can of course vary from brewery to brewery and recipe to recipe so um, yeah but as I said this beer in terms of an, of an American IPA there's nothing particularly surprising about this one in terms of its appearance so yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on with this one very curious about this beer I have to say Yeah, that does smell very nice. You can tell straight away from the aroma of this one that it is really a lot more kind of barley malt leaning. So yeah, I think this one is going to be a little bit more of a kind of West Coast um, IPA. But yeah, nice little bit of a grainy kind of ready backbone to it, which I think is great. You do get one or two little kind of sweetness uh, elements out of it. They're a little bit biscuity kind of things. But um, yeah, overall, first impression of this beer is that it seems to be from the aroma a little bit more of a kind of west coast type uh, type IPA this one but the more I smell of it the more the grains kind of fade away a little bit and the beer kind of mellows out and smoothens out a little bit so um yeah that is a certain certainly an interesting point to make about this particular beer so yeah in terms of the aroma then let's try and break it down a little bit and describe it for you but the backbone of this beer is um undoubtedly a nice kind of uh, quite crisp white bready sort of thing you do get a few elements of bread crusty character coming out of this one as i say some nice uh, there's one or two little elements of a kind of more wholemealy brown bready character in the backbone of this beer as well um and on top of that um you can smell that. I think there might be a little touch of wheat and maybe a little, maybe even a tiny little bit of oat in this one. I'm not 100% sure about the oats, but I think there is a wee bit of wheat in this beer because at the back of the nose, you definitely get a little bit of that wheaty bitiness coming out of it. Um, and you also get, um, you know, you also can just feel that the bread is a little bit smoother and it kind of thickens up the further that you go into the, um, into the aftertaste as well. Or well, not into the aftertaste, the further that you go into the aroma. I keep mixing up my words in these reviews these days, it's terrible. But yeah, um, you certainly do get some very nice kind of um, grainy elements um, coming out of it too. So yeah, um, I think there's a little bit of a woody undertone to this one. As I say, a few grainy elements. They're there in the beginning, they fade a little bit in the middle and they come out a little bit later on as well. But um, yeah, the malty character to this beer and the yeasty side of things is quite interesting for sure. It does have a wee element of a kind of farmhousey uh, note to it as well. You can feel some of those farmhousey woody crackery notes coming out of the, the yeast too. But uh, in the middle of the malty side of things, you certainly get a little touch of, uh, of brown sugar to this one. Maybe there's a light little hint of a kind of caramelly note in there, some McVitie's digestive biscuity sort of things. I'm not sure how good a reference that is for Russians, but it definitely has a little bit of this kind of biscuity, cookie kind of thing coming out of it for sure. So um, yeah, as I say, I, I suspect this beer is going to be a little bit more like a West Coast IPA. And as I've said in previous reviews, I think there's two different directions you can take a West Coast IPA in. It can be a big oily, caramelly sort of thing, such as, you know, the Maximus from Lagunitas or the, um, the Sierra Nevada Torpedo. Or it can be a little bit more of a kind of lighter, bready and biscuity type, um, type West Coast IPA, such as the, uh, the Pliny the Elder. So yeah. Some interesting points um, to make about this beer in, uh, in that regard. So yeah, 
the aroma that comes out of this one I think is um, is very very nice so yeah the, the malty backbone of this beer is quite interesting a few grainy elements to it one or two woody undertones nice kind of brown bready quality biscuit little touch of caramel and one or two little farmhousey um, kind of crackery woody sort of things in there as well so yeah let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then we've covered the malty part of it so on the hoppy side of things, the green component, there's definitely a nice little touch of earthiness in there. You get that at the back of the nose, but a nice kind of bright floral aromaticity. The beer doesn't come across as being too kind of spicy or or dank, actually. It comes across as quite bright in its green component, but we touch of a kind of deeper floral aromaticity there and some nice kind of grassy zestiness uh, coming out of it as well. So, yeah, I really like how, um, I really like how that goes together in this one so um yeah the the green component in this beer is um is really interesting so yeah yeah i think yeah the green component comes across as just as, as quite light in this one but it gives the beer a little bit of brightness to see a wee bit of grassy zestiness and a kind of deeper floral aromaticity in behind that but it's quite balanced between the earthiness floral character and the grassiness on the green side of things. The fruity part of the beer though is quite interesting. So for me, the fruity part of the beer, I think there's a wee touch of a passion fruity note in there, maybe a wee element of mango. Um, I don't know, I can't place exactly what hop this one might be, but I don't get so much in the way of, um, you know, kind of orangey notes or anything out of this one. I think this might be just, you know, this might be like a Citra Simcoe or something like that. Um, yeah, as I say, a wee bit of a stronger passion fruit, a little bit of a, a, a kind of more oily mango in a sense, but I do get a wee bit of a kind of lemony, limey sort of thing um, out of this one. And that's a trait that you can quite often get from, uh, from Citra, of course. It can give you a wee bit of these more kind of lemon, limey type qualities. It, it could be something else, though, you know, there could be a little bit of Equinot in this, or maybe even a little bit of Centennial. There is certainly some very nice kind of uh, lemon, limey characters coming out of this beer. So, um, yeah, aroma-wise, this one comes across really nicely and it does smell a little bit more like a West Coast IPA. So, um, yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But uh, I think it's about time that we have a taste of this one then. So, yeah, this is the Hyperplane, a 7% American IPA, as they're calling it, from XP Brew in Gagarin in the Smolensk region out to the west of Moscow. Really cool to have another Russian beer and brewery for you here on the channel. So let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers, and Nastrovia. Let's go for it. Ooh. That's quite nice, actually. Um, yeah. First impression of this one is, it does have a wee bit of that, um, it does have a wee bit of that almost farmhousey thing to it. You know, if you think about the classic, um, you know, sort of New England uh, beers actually, if you think about those, you know, you've got the Trillium ones which tend to be more wheaty and bitey, you've got the Treehouse ones which are a little bit more kind of oaty and creamy, and then you've got the... Um, the alchemist ones which tend to have that little sort of um they tend to have that little kind of um how would you say they tend to have that little kind of more uh, kind of farmhousey crackery sort of thing coming out of them this beer really has that but it's got a little bit more of a kind of west coasty type character in it at the same time but yeah flavour that comes out of this beer though is um, it's very very nice and it gets a thumbs up from me this one. I certainly would be curious to try uh, some of the other beers that these guys are doing. They had quite a few different styles when I had a little quick look on the website earlier so yeah trying a few more XP brew beers is definitely something we need to look at at some point over the next little while but let's get the rest of it out into the glass just now and we can enjoy this. I think this beer is going to go down very very nicely I should say and that's quite a nice pour as well actually but definitely going to keep this can let me just check that I've lined it up nicely there on the camera there we go so let's try and break down the flavor of this one a little bit more kind of in depth for you it 
So, yeah, in terms of the um, the malty backbone of this one, then you can feel that nice sort of crisp, kind of grainy quality just going right across um, the middle of your palate there. But it does mellow out the more that your palate gets used to it, in a sense. So yeah, straight away, nice little bit of a grainy, kind of bread crusty sort of thing, just blanket in the middle of your tongue there. So if we talk about that middle third of your palate, on top of that kind of grainy backbone layer, if you go to the front half of that middle third of your palate, you will get one or two little kind of woody uh, elements coming out of the beer and on top of that you get a more kind of wholemeal, a sort of smooth wholemeal brown bread character coming out of the beer which I am um, which I really like so yeah um, I think you get a wee bit of white bread evolves out of that as well so yeah the bready characteristics that you have in this one are a little bit complex but as you move to either end of that middle third of your palate you can feel the more grainy elements of the um, you can feel the more grainy elements of the uh, the bread uh, the bread crusty flavors coming out of this beer too, so I like that about this one. Going from the flavor though, I'm a little bit less sure that there is um, that there's wheat malt in this one, and um, because it doesn't have you know, and when I go to the the very in the back of the, the mouth, there is a little touch of something that could be a bit of a wheaty bitiness, but in the middle of your palate, it just doesn't feel quite as smooth as you might get if there was a bit of um, a wheat malt in there. So I'm leaning towards saying there's not wheat malt in this one, but I have to say I'm a little bit torn because on top of that kind of more wholemealy brown bread, you do get a little touch of a kind of white bready uh, note coming out of it as well, which I, I quite like. But um, yeah, that's just the middle third of your palate, as we've as we've said. But on top of all of that bread, in the very centre of your palate, you get a nice little bit of a sweet caramel there. You can pick that out. And as you move further out from that, the, the caramel gets a little bit more sort of grainy and biscuity, uh, just as you move towards the very edges of, um, of your palate. So yeah, I do like how that comes out of this beer. So, yeah, um, as we move, um, as I say, the further you go into the aftertaste for this one, I think the sweet caramel does kind of linger there. But as you move further out towards the um, the edge of the palate, you do get some of these lovely kind of biscuity notes out of the beer. The more and more that I drink of this, the more that I'm tempted just to say this is a, a straight up kind of West Coast IPA. It really has a lot more West Coast character than it does anything else. Um, so, yeah, there are maybe one or two little elements of... You know, New England, like a little bit of a kind of smooth white white bread from the wheat. I'm think you know, I'm I'm kind of as I say, very torn between saying yes or no to wheat in this beer because bit of white bready character, like I said, but you've also got some uh, some kind of other things in there as well. But um, yeah, the way that this goes together is um, is really quite nice actually. So um, yeah, I think it works really really well. But um, yeah. The malty side of this beer in the middle third of your palate, I think, goes together really, really nicely. But, um, yeah, I think that covers the middle third of your palate. Let's focus on the other parts of the beer. So, border region between front third and middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of a bready build-up again there, and you can feel a bit of a stronger, more grainy bread crust. And then as you go into that back third of your palate, you can feel that the grainy backbone of the beer is a little bit stronger and a little bit more kind of bitey in a sense. Um, but on top of that, you get more of the kind of yeasty characters coming out of the beer. You can feel that lighter, airier, kind of more bready element coming out of the beer. So when you start at the back of your palate, you can feel that the height of the flavour kind of condenses down a little bit like this. And then as you go into that middle third of your palate, it's a lot more kind of squashed together and condensed. So yeah, that kind of shows you the dynamic, if you like, of the, uh, the malty backbone in this one. But I think it goes together really well in that sense. The malty side of this beer is quite nice um, and it does, as I say, you do get on the yeasty side of things, you do get a little bit of a kind of woody, crackery sort of thing coming out of that yeasty part of the beer the further you go into the aftertaste as well. But um, yeah, malty yeasty side of things is quite nice, definitely leaning a little bit towards that um, more west coasty type thing but at the same time it does remind me a little bit of that kind of farmhousey vibe that you have from the, the likes of, you know, the heady topper and focal banger from uh, from Alchemist Brewery. It's got a little bit of 
that kind of vibe to it, this one, but a solid IPA. Nonetheless, let's focus on the hoppy parts of the beer. So back corners of the palate then, you definitely get a little touch of earthiness out of this one. As you move further forward, it gets uh, a little bit herbal, but then as you move towards the kind of front corners of your palate, it's got a big, big green component to it, this one. And it's definitely um, a lot more kind of green and bitter, if you like, than the aroma would have you believe. So let's have a little closer look at that. And I mean, while I would say this beer is not going to blow the head off you in terms of bitterness, it certainly does have a little bit of a kind of piney resin note underneath. It's got a little bit more of a kind of brighter floral aromaticity coming off of it, which is great. And then round the front curve of the palate, you get a bit of a lighter, kind of zesty, grassy kind of thing coming off this one. Um, so remember, with a New England IPA, they are a little bit more reliant on early edition hops. Uh, sorry, they're a little bit more reliant on late edition hops. With a West Coast IPA, they are more reliant on in, uh, early edition hops during the warp boil. That's when you get the most bitterness out of them. And as you go through your warp boil, as you go through the warp boil, the um, you progressively get a trade-off in, in favour of flavour and aroma. So the later in the warp boil that you add hops into it, the more you're going to get flavour and aroma. And dry hopping, of course, is the kind of pinnacle of that. So yeah, West Coast IPAs use more early edition hopping, whereas New England IPAs give you more, um, uh, you know, they, they use more late edition hopping, if you like. So um, yeah, I think this one has a little bit of a mixture of that. I think there's some, a good chunk of early edition hops in this. There's quite a bit of late edition hopping within the last half hour of the wort boil as well. So yeah, this beer does have a nice little bit of bitter bite to it, a bit of citrusy zestiness on the grassy side of things, and a bit of a deeper quality to this one. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a bit of Columbus in this. There's something familiar about the kind of spiciness that this beer has. Columbus, of course, and Tomahawk, these are very popular bittering hops, but there might well be a little bit of Chinook in this one as well, because you can feel a wee bit of a pine resin underneath, but I'm more tempted to say um, Chinook um, as one of the bittering hops in this beer. But let's focus on the fruity part of the beer then. So, fruity side of things. Front third of your palate, as I always say, is where you get the fruity elements of the beer coming out. So on that border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready buildup. I would say it's a little bit sweeter there, one or two bread crusty elements. Then the base of that front third of your palate, it has a little bit more of that kind of smooth, wholemealy kind of bready quality to it again, which I quite like. But one or two of the grainy elements coming out there as well, but nice kind of uh, on top of that you get that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer so I really like that um, at the back of that front third of your palate though you can feel there's quite an intense pungent grapefruit to this one and again that makes me wonder about a bit of Chinook I think there might have been uh, a fair chunk of Chinook added into this beer but as you move further forward from that you start to get a few more uh, different flavours out of this one which is which is quite nice but I've got a good feeling there's a bit of Chinook and a bit of um, there's a bit of Chinook and I think a bit of uh, Columbus in this one there's just things in this beer that are quite familiar to me and that makes me guess I like playing guess the hops with these beers as you'll know if you've watched the channel for any length of time but yeah as you move further forward from that you do get a little bit more of a kind of nice oily mangoey note coming out of this one and I think yeah it is kind of a nice it is you know quite a tropical flavour that you get out of this beer I think yeah oily mango I think it could be citra that's in this uh, to be honest because as you start in the back on that back half of that front third of your palate it's got a nice oily mango and then some of that actually spreads forward into the front third of your palate and underneath you're getting a little bit of a sort of lemon limey um, type quality um, out of this one which is interesting so yeah just behind the kind of front tip of your palate you're getting a wee bit of that um, just lemon limey quality in there but the other thing is it could be a little bit of this this beer could be something like Citra, Equinot, Columbus and uh, Chinook it could be something like that that's going on in, um, in this beer but I do get a wee touch of gooseberry out of it as well just behind that front tip of your palate on the front half of the front third of your tongue so yeah, fruity side of the beer is interesting. A bit of strong grapefruit, a bit of a more kind of oily mango. Then as you move towards the front of it, a wee bit of a lemon limey thing underneath and potentially just a wee hint of gooseberry 
coming out of it. So um, yeah, quite a curious beer this one in terms of its fruity composition. But I think that um, that is as much as we need to really describe of the flavour actually. I think it's um, it's, uh, it's really interesting for sure. So big thumbs up to XP Brew on this, but definitely more of a West Coast IPA. The more I drink of it, the more it's a, it's a kind of light, sort of bready, biscuity type West Coast IPA, this one. But a wee touch of the farmhouse note that you would expect of you know, the heady topper and the focal ba banger from Alchemist for sure. Let's round off the review with the mouthfeel then. So, mouthfeel of this beer, definitely uh, mid-bodied, right in the middle of the spectrum. Carbonation is quite smooth in this one. The beer does have a degree of oiliness and slickness to it, which I really like. This is something that you, you expect of a sort of more West Coasty leaning IPA as this one is, and it brings out some of the sweetness of the beer too. But in terms of hoppy bitterness, this one actually does have a good little bit of hoppy bite to it. I think this one might be a sort of 80 uh, 80 ish, maybe even higher IBU beer. But this one is a proper old school West Coast IPA. We could say it's got a proper bit of bitterness to it. So that's probably one of the other reasons why it's right up my street. Too many breweries these days are doing low IBU um, West Coast IPAs, and a, a, you know, a West Coast IPA should not have anything below about you know 70 IBUs, in my opinion. That's just me. But um, yeah, a lot of these the new breweries are doing the malt bases really authentically, but just uh, you know, not putting in the early edition hops, which I don't like. This beer has that nice big 80, at least 80 IBU bite to it, so that's great. The malt base in this one, as I say, a little bit grainy underneath, but on top of that, it starts to smoothen out with the more kind of white bready flavours. Then there's a wee bit of brown sugar kind of sitting on top there, and you know, the brown sugars cover up the booziness of the beer a little bit, although at 7%, it's not overly boozy at all. But uh, the fruity side of the beer for me has a little bit of juiciness and a uh, kind of oiliness too as well. But overall, a really nice beer, this one. Definitely kind of old school West Coast IPA, but with a wee touch of a farmhousey note, which reminds me of um, the beers from the likes of, uh, of Alchemist Brewery over in Vermont in the States. But uh, yeah, an awesome beer, this one, and a very nice introduction to XP Brew in uh, Gagarin. Uh, in Smolensk as well. So yeah, we'll definitely be trying to review a few more of their beers in the future. Maybe something from the dark end of the spectrum next time, or a New England IPA could be interesting too. But uh, yeah, let's leave it there. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from XP Brew as well. We will no doubt return to these guys at some point in the near future. But thank you again for watching. Check out my social media. Check out XP XP Brew, let me know some other Russian beers and breweries that I should be checking out in the comments section below as well. This one was the Hyper Plane, a 7% American West Coast IP, I think we could call it an afterthought, uh, from XP Brew in Gagarin in Smolensk in Russia. Slanjit, Skull, cheers, thank you for watching, and Najdrovia.